Hopefully by now you understand the basics of modern anise and you've seen modern anise before, but if not, what we're going to do right now is show you the 12 basic strikes of modern anise. Starting with a forehand strike to the head, this is a number one. A backhand strike to the head is a number two. Forehand strike to the body, number three. That also could be to the arm. Backhand strike, number four. A slight upward thrust, that's five. Going to the chest, thrusting, slight downward action is six. It could also come straight. Number seven, to the other side of the chest. Again, it could also come with a downward angle. From the ready position, now we strike a number eight, which is to the leg. Backhand strike, anywhere from the hip to the foot. Generally the knee. To the right side, number nine. Now to the eye, number ten. 11 the other eye, 12 straight down on top of the head. One forehand strike to the head. Again, it could be anywhere from the top of the head to the point of the shoulder. It could be here. It could be the ear. It could be the temple. That's one. Two, backhand strike to the head. Three, to the elbow. Or, if his arm was up, it would be to the body. Four, the other side. Five, slight upward. Six, to the chest. Again, it could be at a downward angle as well. Seven, Eight, nine, now again, point of the hip all the way to the foot. This could be at the ankle, could be the hip, or right at the knee. Ten to the eye, but for safety purposes, instead of stopping right here, we'll go past the head. And then that was eleven and twelve, top of the head. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about today is a drill to practice the twelve strikes. Now this drill is twofold. As the person with the stick, it gives me an example or a, a chance to see where each strike is. As a person having the strikes done to you, you get to see what it's like having a stick swing at you. Because believe me, the first couple of times that happens, it's a whole new experience. Now for safety purposes, the person who is standing there without the stick is going to call off the number. Because they have to learn the numbering system, but also, again, for safety, he, I don't want him to think I'm doing a one. And then when we start to the stepping drill, I accidentally do this one and it's clock him in the head. So he's going to call out the number, and I'm going to do the strike. The first set is without movement. One, two, three, four. Now you can touch him. He won't break. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And so that's an example of the first set. Now. Uh, you would take turns, so you both get a chance to do it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it at a different angle so you can get a little better view of it. So again, Chris will call out the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now we also have examples, and if you, if you saw earlier or have been in the seminars, we have different striking styles. I'll just demonstrate. Well, he's going to call out one through four, uh, or all the way to five, and give you a real quick example of a different striking style. This one is called with follow through. So again, I'm here. One, two, three, four, five. So that would be an example of with follow through. Then we have the, the first one with just with control, and if we want to do what we call a rebound or drawing the stick back, just to give an example, just one through four. One. Two, three, four, five. So I guess an example of the different striking styles there. Next, we're going to move on to movement. Now we're going to discuss movement and footwork and stepping. Uh, there's a common misconception in, in what we do as uh, you hear the term step and drag, which really means that you're going to raise the right foot, or if that's your forward foot, you raise it and pull the other foot up. That's not it at all. What we do here is actually lift and push, lift and push. 
that, and you always want to try to keep your feet the equal distance apart. If they start two feet apart, they stay two feet apart, or whatever the distance is. We don't want to leave the foot behind, nor do we want to trail it in here, nor do we want to cross our feet. So the way we do this first is on the 12 strikes offensively. These sticks we laid down here to give us a guide. It is not the rule. It is a guide only. So when I'm here, I'm going to try to step 45 degree angle. If you're moving to the right, what foot should you move first? The right. If you're moving to the left, move to the left. So from here, if I'm moving to the right on my first number one strike, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now on, a, on any of the linear strikes, the five or the twelve for example, that are coming straight in, I could step to the this way with the five, I could step this way with a six, any of the thrusts, it doesn't matter which way you step. It depends really upon what you're going to do or what object may be in your way or what your initial goal is. Now, again on number 12, likewise I could step this way, I could step this way depending on what I want to do. All right, so that's the, the stepping. Now, defensively, same way here, if Chris were to uh, get in a ready position, he strikes number one, I cut right here. That's my angle. You remember you always want to stay close enough to where you can grab with your free hand. We're going to demonstrate that on a number two so you can see better. He comes here. Now, the reason he's not stepping as much because the sticks are in his way right now, but he would be stepping off too. I check myself. As long as this arm is not fully extended, I'm close enough. This is okay. This is not because you're going to use this to develop more techniques. So again, if he strikes a one, I'm here. There's my check, two. So you can use it defensively as well. Now, once you understand that, we're going to move these out of the way. Once you understand the, the, the stepping motion, now Chris goes back to his regular position of just standing there. And you go through the 12 strikes with movement now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you can add the footwork accordingly. Now it's also remember to always keep your uh, free hand open and up. We call this the live hand. It's going to serve many dual purposes. For example, if, when Chris strikes my head a number one strike, that's going to be my checking hand. Likewise, he needs to keep his hand up because if I come in now, he's able to block it and he's ready to move on. Likewise as well, if he's striking me, he's going to keep his hand up so that when we practice our empty hand drills, I have something to hit because we want to develop the ability to actually hit the person because that's going to give us the ability once he's stunned to carry on our technique. So when he strikes, block check, counter. And you, you make that hit because you're hitting right there. All right. If it comes to this side, same thing, I step at here and I hit, boom, because that's going to give you the ability to carry on. So a little faster when he comes in, boom, you're right there. If you want to finger lock him, you can come up this way, it doesn't matter. You have that ability because both your hands are up. Now, so far everything we've done is right handed. Remember, you should always train with your left hand as well. So if you're doing the 12 strikes, again, we base everything off forehand and backhand sides. This is a number one, this is a number two. If I was in the left hand, this is a number one, this is a number two. Or forehand and backhand. So the same angles. Okay, so it's the same, just using the left hand. Likewise, when we begin doing it with sparring or with a partner, Chris is in the ready position, I strike a, a one, which is the forehand side. So if he calls out a one, one. boom, now he's going to block check. Okay. So that's still what we're doing. You're just beginning to practice that with your left hand. And as the drills go on, you'll see more and more left-handed drills. Because Professor once said, if you fight somebody left-handed, you'll win 90% of the time because you're not used to it.